everybody to join our economic recovery V U or L shape webinar brought to you by Kananga and uh, managed by Wellford. And I'm the moderator for today's session. And we are very excited to have you here tonight on a Friday night to join us in this webinar. Now, before we begin, I just want to uh, check the internet connectivity with you. So if you can see my screen and you can see our webcam, uh, please type yes in the chat box okay, and let us know. If you can see our screen and hear our voice, see the visual here on audio very nicely. Uh, type yes in the chat box. All right, cool. Yeah, so many interaction from you. <laughs> well, as usual, this is another uh, fully uh, overwhelming session because we have just so many response to join our webinar today. So we could probably hit maximum capacity real soon. So if you if any of your friends can't log in, please ask them to watch from our Facebook Live, okay, instead. So if you are uh, watching from Facebook Live, I want to welcome you to tune in to catch this uh, webinar brought to you by Gananga. And today we have a very, very intriguing uh, session where I myself also want to figure out, which is economy recovery. Is it U, V, or L shape? Now, many of you here have uh, one way or another been impacted by uh, COVID-19, I'm sure. And uh, this health crisis around the world uh, has become a pandemic and have not only uh, hit us from a health perspective, but also bring the economy to a standstill, where we have seen many bankruptcies happening uh, in the SME space around the world. We will see that uh, where travels, uh, travels are halted, where planes are grounded, when uh, retail malls are closed, so there will be uh, many financial repercussions happening around the world. So we have seen that the US unemployment rate tonight will have uh, will probably reach double digit, more than 10%. So that's the forecast. So many major economies have faced uh, unprecedentedly high uh, unemployment rate. So when, when this health crisis has brought the world to a standstill, so will will we have a smooth recovery? If we have a smooth recovery, will it be V-shaped, U-shaped or L-shaped? So that's where uh, our speaker today, which is none other than Mr. Ui Kok Hua, will share with us uh, this evening, All right? Mr. Ui, are you ready? Yes, yes. All right, awesome. But before we begin, let's talk about a disclaimer. Whatever we share in this uh, Kananga webinar is only for educational purpose. So in no way that we give you any buy or sell recommendation to buy any stocks. So if you decide to buy or sell any companies or any uh, structured products, you do at your own risk. Okay, none of none of the none of us or Kananga are responsible for your financial decisions. Okay. So Kananga has a series of webinars that they want to bring to you to educate you to become a well-informed investor. And for this Q2, which is uh, April, May, and June, there's two more sessions in, in May and June, which is the happening next uh, in the uh, 19th of May, which will talk about unleash the tactics of dissecting technical charts. So if there are any questions about charts, our speaker Derek Lee will share with you how he dissect charts and show you uh, where are the possible trading opportunities. So if you have, you can ask him any live chart, he will dissect it for you. All right, so long like the number has. Huh? So the next we have, uh, the next session in June, the shine of miners. Now, right now, I think with QE is rolling out when the, uh, when unlimited QE is rolled out in US, ECB has committed to a lot of bond purchase program. Bank of Japan has also committed to unprecedentedly big uh, bond purchase program. So we'll go shine. So that's what we, we will discuss in uh, the June webinar, the shine of miners. Miners refer to the gold and silver mining companies. All right, so this is what we will have in the next two months. So stay tuned for more webinars brought to you by Gananga Investment Bank. So let me, have the pleasure to introduce our speaker today, which is Mr. Ui. Now, Mr. Ui is a managing partner of MRR Consulting, dealing mainly with business appraisal, investment, and financial training. Uh, presently, he is a licensed investment advisor by the Securities Commission 
uh, Malaysia. He's also CFA, CFE, and ICVS. Right now, personally, I've attended Mr. Ui a seminar before in Berjaya Times Square, and today I'm very excited to invite him to come to this uh, Kenanga webinar again to share with you uh, his session. Now, he is always he, oh, he's a regular invited speaker for Kenanga Investment Bank, and today he will, he will continue. Okay, he is uh, amazing sharing with you about whether this economy recovery is VU or L shape. All right, over to you, uh, Mr. Ui. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I need to thank uh, Kenanga for giving me a chance to share with you. I'll share with you on basically I asking uh, answering three questions. Uh, when will end? Uh, impacts, no, from the economy and financial impacts, and then as uh, last one will be how to invest during these periods. So as you know. Uh, to answer today's topics on uh, V, U, and L shape, actually quite difficult. Okay, so the only things that actually, you know, to, because nobody, you know, I think none actually, you know, have actually experienced a pandemic before. So, I'll share with you that the closest that we can think of this will be the, the 100 years ago, the pandemic, uh, Spanish flu. Okay? And today, when we talk about V, U, and L, basically is we talk about, you know, depends on all, everything on the COVID-19. Now, if yeah, you look- Mr. Wei, if you have a slide, you want to share with us, you can share your screen. Okay? If you have prepared some slide to share with us, you can uh, share your screen. I can show you uh, the screen right now, right? Yes, you can. Okay. Now, if you look through the pandemic, Spanish flu, 1918 to 1920, okay, this will give you the, the guide on how to handle this pandemic COVID-19. Okay. Now, uh, if you look through this diagram from pandemic Spanish flu in 1918 uh, to 1920. Hang on a minute, we are not seeing your screen yet. Okay, oh. you, did not, you did not share your screen. Oh, I, uh, <laughs> I didn't share my yes, screen. Yes, you need to click, share your screen so we can wait, see. Uh. Okay, wait. Uh. Uh, wait, uh. Okay. Yes, excellent. Yeah, we are now seeing your screen right now. <laughs> yeah. So you perfect. can actually, yeah. Okay. So I'm talking about the Spanish uh, flu, 1918 to 1920. Okay, to give us a guide, uh, guide on how to handle this pandemic pandemic so COVID-19 okay why because this is actually the closest to us and 100 years ago okay if you look through this uh, picture looks quite uh, similar right I mean now we have a lot of people actually need to wear masks and you can see from here the you know, the hospital okay every day now you switch on TV you can see some of the hospitals uh, some of the exhibitions hall turned into hospitals. Okay, this is actually Spanish flu in 1918 to 1920, and you can see from this uh, public notice. Okay, in 1918. Okay, uh, basically the spread of the Spanish flu. Okay, and it says that the second paragraph: all public gathering consisting of 10 or more are prohibited. Okay, our government also followed these rules the 100, 100 years ago that no, not more than 10. And in fact, actually 100 years ago, they already said it cannot have gathering more than 10. Okay, during the Spanish flu. Okay, these pictures again. Um, police, nurses, also all wearing masks. Then you can see from here on the people wearing smart, uh, masks, okay? You must wear masks or go to jail, okay? Now, this uh, Spanish flu actually started in 1918, uh, March, and ended in actually two years later, February 1920. So actually the whole duration is actually for two years. And the total death is actually you add the 
uh, World War I and World War II together, roughly 50 million deaths. And the reported cases uh, of this French flu, okay, uh, during the summer time, uh, just like right now, everyone happy, everything cool off, right? So during summer time, the number of cases actually slowing down. But the second wave start in August 1918. And the peak actually is when in September until November 1918. That means if, if, uh, if this COVID-19, the pattern actually is similar to the Spanish flu, we may see the peak actually in in September and November. That's why, that's why the, the key risk now is actually if things start to cool down, but you can see from the other countries just like India, Pakistan, uh, the number of cases getting higher and Russia numbers getting higher, Brazil cases are getting higher, but whereas the US number a bit flat, uh, while some of European country uh, flat and slowing down, but Asian countries, it depends. So like Malaysia, China, you know, New Zealand, Australia, depending quite well. Uh, but you can see some other country actually, you know, like African countries start to, the numbers actually getting high, higher and the curve is getting uh, steeper and steeper. So actually some country things may slow down, but some country numbers getting higher. So my view here is actually is, it will be a wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four. So now, if you go back to Spain, uh, the Spanish flu in 1918 and 1920, actually, the, the key risk is actually September and, and November. Why? Because when it comes to October, all those uh, US, European country, you know, start to, the cold weather come in, you actually cannot differentiate between flu or COVID-19 normal flu of COVID-19. That is the reason why the risk is getting higher. You actually don't know. And it's actually quite normal to have flu during those winters, winters, uh, winter periods. So that's why the cases will get higher. And you can see from this number that actually the highest number, like the U US alone uh, in, in October, uh, 195,000 actually you know, people died in that month alone. And you can see from this diagram, it's actually the second wave that killed the most people. So one I want to uh, highlight over here is that uh, be careful of the second wave. And you can see right now in Malaysia, uh, even though you no know, less than 100, you no know, 50, 60, I mean, we'll start slowing open up. Uh, but you can see US, we are talking about a few hundred to thousand, but they some of the state actually start to open up. So you can under, understand uh, they, are in there, they are preparing to face the second wave. So when we end, as I said to you, when you talk about the V-shape, U-shape and L-shape, basically all depends on how we look at the COVID-19 and when we can get the vaccine. Uh, vaccine. I will talk about it uh, soon. Now, you look at the diagram here, as I mentioned, due to the sound. Some is actually, you know, curve getting higher. Some actually, you know, slowing down already. So every country actually have a different curve. So in short, actually the whole world, all we are talking about global lockdown. No one will open up the borders. So as a result, airline will have a tough time. Tourism, all this will have a tough time, definitely. Okay, because uh, this country may open up, but uh, may slow down, but other country, the numbers getting higher, you they not open your border. So, and this will continue for until maybe next year. So, staff and actually facing a tough time, definitely. Now, I want to highlight to you, is actually, most, most likely you also read through the news, that recently the Washington Post say, uh, highlighted uh, that on the 5th of May, that actually, the CDC actually do have a uh, give some internal report that uh, by June first, the US cases may surge to two hundred thousand per day. Right now, it's on average for three thousands. So, the number of death cases uh, per day may reach three thousands. So you notice that the internal this number, uh, White House says may not be true, true not true, but they actually 
aware that the number is actually getting higher soon. Okay. Uh, but because uh, this lockdown, the damage to the economy is actually huge. That's why some states actually just need to open it. Okay. Now, this slide, I want to highlight to you that, of course, some people say, you know, we actually uh, need to have a herd immunity. Okay. So basically, it means hopefully, you know, you have this antibody, then you will not catch it second time. But the world, WHO says uh, you may catch a second time. My key point here is that now, uh, January until now, okay, the first cases, I mean, say roughly January until now, only uh, four months, four, five, four, five months. Anyone actually catch a second time? What would be the uh, health impact to these people? Look at okay. Um, actually, nobody know that. No, what will happen to your health conditions if you catch the second time? Okay, the first time you say healthy, no problem. Then second time, what? If you will catch it. So, what will the impact? Nobody know. At the moment, I think a lot of people actually the cases should quite mild. Then, <coughs> not that serious. Okay, can recover. Uh, but. But the WHO says you can catch a second time. Okay, and will the second time worse than the first time? Don't know yet. And sometimes, if you look through 1918 until now, I mean 1918 Spanish flu, those born, baby born during 1918 to 1920, and versus those baby born after 1920, those born during 1918 to 1920, their health in general they are weaker. Actually, the research shows that there are a lot of health problems, uh, those born in 1918 to 1920. As compared to those born after 1920, they're more healthy. And they also have a research showing that those gone through 1918 to 1920, uh, I think recently also have a report saying that they the, do have other problems, especially on the mental problem. The stress level quite high, the med uh, so that's why we need to take care of ourselves. And seriously, uh, we don't know this virus because it's different. Why different? Because it's not from the normal influenza flu. Because they are actually close to they are actually the SARS, MERS. No, that's why it's called coronavirus. So it's different. That's why and. Uh, we actually don't know, okay, how uh, will actually give impact to us on long term, okay. Now, every expert says that the whole recovery depends on when we can get the vaccines. I also know, everyone also know, um, US President Donald Trump says you'll get it by year end, okay. Every country, you know, try to get it as soon as possible. Now, the different stages of vaccine developments and WHO says uh, right now got 102 you know, doing uh, on these vaccine developments and out of this 102, eight actually in the phase two. That means 100 target people, okay, start, start to see the, the impact. But you do have stage three, stage three and stage four. We are talking about thousands of people you know, to test the, the effectiveness of these uh, vaccines. And you have this key problem here. In Zhejiang, okay, they discover that actually do have a, at least 30 mutated strains. So now, and this actually give the those scientists uh, the job actually getting tougher. If you say all the analysts say uh, that we the whole recovery depends on the vaccines, now the Zhejiang actually research say, says that we do have a 30 types of mutated strains and the actually make this make the the, the whoever involved in the vaccine and development the job even tougher and the key question now is this we not even have antiviral medicines then we don't talk about vaccines so if you talk about the antiviral we don't even talk about 
don't have medicine to cure it. How to talk about vaccine? That's why the recent uh, French actually uh, uh, specialist, uh, actually you know, advisor to WHO, he says that at least one year. Uh, Hong Kong as well, the specialist also says at least one year. One year from now means till next year May. Okay, at least one year. So, and you notice that, and this virus, you know, quite, quite clever, it can mutate. So, if we're really not too sure that when all this vaccine development, some machine, uh, protein, RNA, some actually, you know, all these vector, uh, DNA, so actually, we're not too sure that this uh, vaccine can cure all the 30 or can cure half or can just cure one, one of the strain. So actually we don't know. So that's why it make this job actually quite difficult. So if let's say, you know, only cure half, then how about the rest of the strains? So it make people, you know, wonder, you know. So if actually need to inject more than one or two or three or so to, you know, to fully immune to all the virus or how? That's why my view here is actually it's very tough, very, very tough. So now in 1976, uh, if you go back to 1976, strain flu outbreak, at that time, the US president, okay, why I want to show to you this slide is because this one is actually quite interesting, quite close to the current situation. Why? Because at that time, the US president, George Ford, uh, because of this swine flu outbreak. So he actually won, this is actually the photos shows, you know, the received the vaccine, okay, from this uh, swine flu outbreak. And he rushed, you know, that he wanted the American, you know, to get injected. And this actually the shows, you know, that this photo show to you that, you know, all these Americans uh, injected with uh, these vaccines in 1976. And what happened? Within 10 months, 25% uh, of US populations, we are talking about 45 million citizens, get vaccinated. However, is this out of these 45 million, 400 people develop this GBS, uh, Gillian's very syndrome, where it's actually a very uh, rare, serious, no, and cause on the immune system attack. So my view here is actually, that's why American, uh, if you ask them to inject vaccine, some, some of them actually, the normal vaccine, no, all our normal kids actually you know, get injected. They also not so keen to let their kids actually injected with all the vaccine. So my key point here is when you rush and we actually not really tested uh, to check the effectiveness and we're talking about uh, 45 million people uh, and out of the 45 million, 400 people, uh, 50 people no, do develop this GBS. So this is actually the key risk. Now my next question here is actually, is if this vaccine available, developed by US in November, December, were you you're interested to get uh, vaccinated or not? Okay, this is actually from CDC. He says that uh, this vaccine, 1976, the swine flu vaccine, basically is on 100,000 people. One actually, you know, do develop this uh, GBS syndrome, but the risk is there. But how about if let's say, you know, by year end, actually, you, uh, develop these vaccines, will you dare to take? And inject in your body. So my key point here is actually, I don't think any, you ask me, I will not. Okay, you ask me whether get my family members get injected, I will say wait for a while first. So now the next one. Now we're going to talk about the economy and financial impacts. After answer the earlier parts, so you notice that from the earlier slides, from the Spanish flu, from the vaccines, then you notice that, oh, actually, every expert says you need to develop, depends on vaccine, and this vaccine only available next year. So, uh, whatever we are facing right now, 
the normal norms will be like this for, for long period of time. So of course, it's going to give huge impact on the economy uh, as well as the financials to us. Now, when we talk about V-shape, all the analysts say V-shape. V-shape means that uh, the lowest points of the stock market is actually on the 23rd of March and now actually on the way of recovery. And most of the economic, uh, those researchers in US, they say that the lowest point in, in not all, uh, they say that economies will recover by third quarter. That means the second quarter, that's actually, you know, right now, is actually the lowest point. With this, you no know, open up, they expect the economy recovery on third quarter. So that means stock market you are seeing right now is on the way to recover. So when you, when you see the Dow Jones, like, the diagram is look like this, it means it will go up higher. Is it true? My view here is actually, as a share view just now, that vaccine may not be available uh, only next year. That means unlikely to be V-shaped. Okay. How about U-shape? U-shape means that everyone talk about sell in May and go away. That means you're going to have a one more dip down. That means actually, you know, May, June, July onwards, market will come down. Then after that, by August, market will start to bottom up and recover already. That means the stock market will bottom up in actually in the second quarter rather than the March. Then economic recovery maybe in the fourth quarter. I also don't think so. Okay. My view here is actually is I think will be L shape. That means the lowest point, the economic recovery next year. Okay. And lowest point most likely next year. Economy at lowest point next year. Okay. Then how about the stock markets? My view here will be uh will be roughly September to to December that period. Why? When all these winter countries start to have a, the flu season, this is a where that the most likely you will see the market will come down. When the cases actually jump higher, this is where you start to see the second wave, the second wave. So I think at that time market will drop to low levels, to very low levels. Okay, that's why I expect the L shape. Okay. So you from this slide, you notice that at the moment everyone talk about the health crisis, how to take care, you know, make sure everyone is safe, you know. But you notice that it should lead to the economic crisis and need a lot of stimulus packages, you know, every country all involved, you know, and that means a trillion of money, you know, billions actually to help. And because of oil prices, low oil prices, that's why it lead to the some banks, uh, the turn bad. I mean, the, the, bad, the loans turn bad. But at the moment, you ask me, uh, the most banks, the fundamentals remain healthy. Okay. Now, talk about Malaysia. Uh, ben Negara says you have uh, six months until September. And the key question here is, after October, are you able to service your loan? Then, if cannot, your business remain bad. Vaccine only available next year. So, this like the C uh, MCO. I mean, the, to me, I look at it like the soft lockdown. Uh, will continue until next year. So, if you involve in those uh, tourism, global lockdown, airline, will continue to be tough. Only local. No flights then, but international flight definitely, definitely difficult. Then tourism will be difficult. Then some of the services, the hotel business will be tough. Okay. Oil and gas, given oil, low oil prices, same thing. You know? uh, the movement will be uh, stopped. Okay. And this soft load now will continue for a long period of time. And from this financial crisis actually lead to the end of problem, from debt crisis. They say, sure not. Now, if you remember 2008, 2008, when you have this uh, financial crisis in US, what happened after one or two years later? You have Greece, the Europe crisis. Why happening of Greece crisis? Because 
every during the financial crisis in 2008 2009 everyone have a stimulus package one and two and some of them when they spend money borrow money the debt level went up to very high level and they start up one year later they start to have a downgrade risk so that's the reason why from this health crisis can lead to economic crisis which actually happened now later on may lead to some form of the financial crisis may not be a big one i don't think the bank will collapse but thrown that crisis some country may have problems and you already have argentina says no uh, need uh, substantial no debt relief no, because no they actually have problem to service the IMF debts okay now this is one interesting uh, diagram from the current economist two weeks ago okay uh, rating house also used about the same roughly not this brief but roughly a bit uh, this that Percent, I mean, this indicator to judge you know, the country. If you look, notice that Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, they rank higher than us. And on the right hand side, BBB plus, these are SP, uh, they are SP rating. They are actually lower than us. We are actually ranked number 25 and we are A minus. So you notice that. So my key point here is be prepared. Okay, so risk getting higher. If you continue to borrow money, uh, more debts, you know, to have the money to come out with all the stimulus package. If this thing prolong, then uh, risk to us, you know, downgrade risk, the risk is getting higher. That one, you notice that uh, in general, we actually rank lower than all these ASEAN countries. Those are highlighted in red color. Now, this one, some of you may have seen before, saying that actually lowest point this year, recovery next year. And you can see from here, US actually dropped to negative 5.9 this year. Next year, up 4.7. China this year dropped 1.2, still positive. Next year, jump 9.2. Okay. And the worldwide is actually, you know, lowest Point this year, negative nine, uh, negative three, next year, 5.8. Now, I want to show you one number. You know, some, some of you, after listening to me for half an hour, you know, feel quite sad. Okay, don't be so sad, okay? You can see over here, if you brought a diagram, actually recovery next year. The issue now is actually, when is actually the lowest point? Okay? Now, our market right now, you notice that a lot of retailers, uh, some people ask me, no, no, the stock's getting higher. How? My view here is actually is when the market actually filled with the retailers and not many institutional inside the market, then you need to be very careful. Okay? So when retailer says worst is over, you need to be even more careful. Okay? My view here is actually is you will come down. Okay? But you cannot be too negative. Why? Because we are talking about negative uh, market, will, economy will go up next year. The key question is actually when it will be the lowest point. You notice that Warren Buffett holding 130 billion cash. He's also not buying. Why he's not buying? He's selling. He's not buying because he cannot find value. Same. I also cannot find values. I will wait. So one of the key strategy now is actually if you're a long-term investor when you hold cash. Good value, then you'll buy, waiting to buy. Anytime waiting to buy. Now, why I stress this point? In 1918 to 1920, after 1920, the world economy have a solid nine years of the boom market until 1929, Great Depression. The world market just jumped like mad until the stock market jumped until to the level you cannot believe it in 1929 Great Depression. So if history repeat, it means that after 2021, if I say thing recover, the market will go up all the way. You ask me, Mr. Wing, confirm nine years or not? Like uh, 1920 to 1929. 
I don't know, but I will say at least a few years. Okay, that kind of solid rally. So that's why when the market dropped to low level, any stocks, any good fundamental stocks actually good, you find actually the good value, the selling a very cheap level, it's a time to buy. That's why must be your cash must be ready. Okay, uh, get ready. But of course, don't rush in now. Now from earlier diagram here, actually I do some simple calculations. This actually IMF numbers says that US total GDP in trillion is actually 21.4 trillion. Accounted for the, US, the whole world 25%. And if negative 5.9% means what? It means they were lost roughly about negative 1.3%. I mean, negative 1.3 trillion this year loss. No? And if you look through all the recent no, stimulus packages by all this, by the Fed, basically about 3 trillion actually should be enough to help to cushion the drop. Okay, same as Europe also come up with the, the packages about 1.10 billion. Okay, so over here, if Europe is a negative 7.5, so if you times 18.7 trillion, if you're talking about negative 1.4, roughly about, no? There are similar packages about 1, 1 trillion, I think it's about there. Okay, so all this will help to cushion the drop. So then your next question is, I may focus accurate or not. My question here is that geez, if you look through history, especially period of the beginning forecast versus the later forecast, you notice that a lot of time actually they do have revisions. So the initial forecast may be wrong. I think uh, they may need to revise it. Okay. If you look through the, the Dow Jones right now, okay, the current Dow Jones level is actually going to break the moving average 20. It appear to me that uh, to me that uh, she's quite weak right now already. Okay, really weak. Uh, you notice that uh, market go up then towards the end uh, before close the one or two hours you know you notice that uh, sell down already. Okay, the markets just need waiting for one bad news to sell down. Okay. This is the latest magazine. I mean the economy is the latest uh issues shows that dangerous gap between the market and the real economy. So because the valuation getting higher, but the economy is getting bad. And you notice then last two days ADP number is bad, but stock market getting higher. Okay, I'm not too sure today. I think same scenario because they just reported the uh, non-farm payroll. Uh, the numbers actually the job loss actually you no know, 21 uh, million compared to the I mean 20.5 million as compared to the 22 million forecast expected. So market expect more bad, but this one less bad, consider good news. So you notice that uh, market take it this way. If the bad news actually not that bad, consider good news, then market will go up. So uh, continue to go higher. That is the reason why this economy is the cover, the, uh, the latest issues saying that the dangerous gap between the stock markets versus the economy. So be careful. This is actually the ADP job loss numbers. Okay. Now, talk about US, now talk about Malaysia. Bank in general forecast is negative 2%. Okay, of course, this forecast made in actually, you know, earlier, earlier. Okay. So, and nowadays, you know, this said a lot and this says, oh no, this year may be negative three. Some say, like, oh, negative four. Some no, no, some say it's negative six. Some recently, one research report said negative eight. Okay, how they come out negative eight? Now, with this seminar, I share with you. Uh, our Prime Minister say, every day we lost 2.4 billion. Assuming 50 days, uh, on average roughly 50, some actually allowed, some actually not yet, some fully open, some not full open, roughly 50 days uh, on average. So you are talking about 120 billion loss. 120 billion loss, if you notice that compared to our 2019 total GDP is 1.4 trillion. It's 8.4 percent, friend. So you notice that. Expect the, our number to go down, the revised number to go down. I'm um, maybe you know around that levels. Okay. 
Now, please take note. Is this this lockdown? Will we have a second lockdown? My view here is actually is, if based on the Spanish flu, going to have a second lock. I mean the, the second wave. Most likely, we're going to have a second lockdown. Third lockdown. So all this will definitely will contribute to more negative of GDPs, including worldwide as well. Okay. Uh, very simple reasons. The vaccine only available next year. Okay. And we are talking about the faster that we can get. Normally, it's actually the three, five years. Okay. And this is actually the slide from the earlier where we're talking about the, the economic development growth uh, from Ben Negara. Okay. We, mitigated by the all the economic stimulus packages. So then you have this uh, 250 billion. Of course, this 250 billion, some of it is actually, uh, part of it is actually from the loans, okay? And we do have injections no? to help the household, no, individuals, okay? Every country doing that. Now, we want to look through individual sectors. And please take note, Services accounted roughly about 57%, okay, 57%, coming to 60%. Now we look through the next slides actually to look in details of service sectors. Wow. What do you think about the wholesale and retail? Tough, right? Tough, right? Lockdown, right? Lockdown, open up, little lockdown, right? Um, so, more, you dare not go to more, right? You notice that your credit card spending also come down, right? Ah, so you ask me, and this accounted for about 30% of the total services. So me, uh, I think it's tough. Finding finance sectors, less transactions, okay. ICD remains solid, okay. Then how about the, the real estates and business services? You ask me, Will you consider buying a house given over supplies? Um, my view here is actually property sectors will have tough time. They really have tough time. Um, how about those no, uh, under constructions, no, development, all this? To me, the risk is there. The risk is there because you open up, then later on lockdown, I mean the lockdown again, then open up, then lockdown again. And some of these uh, oversupply issue is quite bad already and like in, in, in Malaysia on average roughly about 10 offices 3 empty and we everything go online actually you may not need office and a lot, everyone say work from home work, work from home you may not need office then how about retail mall people will prefer buy online then same thing people don't go to the mall anymore because too many people so you're scared. So again, tough time. This will affect the REITs as well. Those office REITs and the retail REITs as well. Transportations, having tough time. Okay, because you're not moving. I mean, going up. Then, food beverages and accommodation. Hotel line. Oh, you notice that recently, you no? Know, this hotel closed down, that hotel closed down. You ask me, more to come. Because some of the hotels actually depends on the tourists. Some depends on Chinese stories. They're not coming. For business, we are talking about global lockdown. So, I expect a lot of hotels will have uh, big problems. Okay. Then you can see from here, the manufacturing. The key problem for manufacturing is what? Supply chain. China may actually start their productions. However, some parts, they have problems. Some of the parts actually, you know, produced by other country because of the lockdown, may not able to send over. So that's that's the reason why it's tough. China actually need to make sure that you know the supply chain actually, you know, all in okay. Otherwise, uh, it's no point. You no, know? you go to the factory, you want to you know produce product, then your boss mentioned you, oh, these parts uh, needs to solve from this country. You know, oh, sorry, yeah, uh, because the lockdown cannot. Okay. So, and you're talking about, you're talking about global, no? Uh, 
it's not Malaysia that recover then or China recover then everything okay you know because some part actually produce the other country and they're locked down okay and they're facing facing problem right now so the manufacturing actually disrupt I mean disruption so that's why it's a big problem now mining remain to be uh, staff or in gas sectors definitely staff okay you can see from the this diagram worst is over I think given the the global lockdown I think oil prices will remain remain low for quite some time okay over supply issues quite bad then you have all uh, agriculture you notice that our CPO price is getting lower touching 2000 now at one time I think yesterday 2009 the key issue is that the key issue is actually is our main buyer like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, they're having problems. The number of COVID cases is getting higher. And they're from the earlier, a few hundred now, it's actually, you know, the like India's thousand per day already. And you know, it's thousand per day. The number will go very big later on. And you, in general, I think they have problem to to cope with the increase in the numbers, okay? Uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, um, India, these are our main buyer, you know? Okay, earlier on, it's actually, you know, so that's why our export actually, you know, the demand was slow, was slow down. Of course, don't, China may buy more from us, uh, from us, from oil. Construction sectors. What do you think construction sectors? I think it will be tough. Why tough? I ask you, uh, if you look through the budget 2019-20, oil related, not I say, it's oil related based on the budget is actually 50 billion. And our oil, the cost is actually 30, 40 per, bar per barrel. So given the lower oil prices now, 20 plus, what do you think of, of the 50 billion, the contribution to the, our budgets early on? I think the number will be tough. That means the Petronas are having tough time now. They may incur loss. May not be lost, but you no know, sharp drop in profit also possible. Then how about the dividend contribution by Petronas? So all these will actually will contribute to you know, the revenue will be lower. I think one way is actually delay on those unnecessary construction projects. It may happen. Okay. To me, it actually may happen. And a lot of these uh, companies facing tough time now may incur losses. Next year, tax collection also lower. This slide I'll share with you already. Oil prices will, will come, I mean, will remain low. And because of that, the inflation will remain low. Okay. Now, this actually, you know, reported you know, from, from our DG, how DG, actually sixty percent percent on the fertility is actually in age group sixty and above, and those with uh, this based on the those death, uh, so all this hundred uh, percent death cases, uh, eighty percent uh, for those do have the health problems. So and our DG say that the age group uh, 55, 60, basically fifty five. 50 plus and above, 60, 70, 80, 90, all this high group, the high risk group. Okay, my key point here is actually, this will be a normal norm. Means that if you look through the statistics from the China, um, on average uh, for those 70 to 79, out, oh, means those uh, patient age 70 to 79, the fertility rate actually is 8%. But those 80 uh, is 14.8%. That means on average, roughly out of 10, uh, one were gone. Okay? But if you have he other health problems, then the chances will go very high. So in short, means that 50 plus 60, 70, you will notice that even in US now, some of them may not want to come out. In Malaysia, China, okay, 
some of them may not want to come come out because they are high group high risk so it will become a norm the stock spending i mean the spending will be less and they are basically uh, refuse no to to high, high risk group that's why uh because the risk to them is actually you know quite high so this actually you know the suspected cases are actually from from china okay now the last part for today is on the investment teams as i mentioned to you the sound cash warren buffett holding 130 billion cash my view here is actually same thing follow him holding cash okay and at the same time if certain stocks are actually have good values you can buy if you ask me which sector to buy i would say consumer staples this sector will continue to be good high demand i mean you can see from malaysia's index uh, let me share with you on technology and healthcare related stocks uh. okay this is actually our klci uh, my view here is actually you know it will the trend showing that it may come down that's why you notice that the worst afternoon sessions uh, selling will happen you notice that actually a lot nowadays actually you know the worst towards the afternoon session selling start to happen i think five million is selling okay and this is actually our our care uh busa healthcare index you notice that within one year the go the index actually go even higher than february you know our healthcare index okay so same as technology index uh, getting higher so in short is that not if you want to invest you can buy stocks in these two area i mean these three area consumer sectors technology related or healthcare related still you no know, uh these are the areas at least from now you may not want to buy now for those long term investors unless you no know, drop to the market go down to another wave selling then be prepared to to buy those you no know, uh at lower levels and as i said to you from now until maybe you know year end these few months i don't know when will be the lowest point like lihood if we are talking about next year the will, economy will be the lowest point uh maybe the second next year stock market is always acting ahead 6 to 9 months that means likelihood the market bottom will be in fourth quarter that means roughly about september october this win during winter time when the case is getting higher nobody there to buy stock price stock may come down okay um how about you say is that the what if i say us able to get a uh, vaccine as i said to you that if you look through the earlier slide i share with you on the the frank fu on the 1976 uh and that she you know if you rush to produce the vaccine as she do have some complication later on that's why american actually don't believe in uh vaccine that's the reason so to me this scenario you ask me will happen or not this year uh i'm not too sure but if you look through um the the 1976 no that uh, us presidential elections uh the president fought actually you no know, for one term only okay so uh be holding cash to me waiting to buy good value stocks or you can actually you know choose these out sectors i think will be a good strategy sir, if you want to invest that i share i share with you on the the kelsi chart as well as healthcare charts and last part actually you know the technology charts okay that's all my sessions now q and a sessions Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ui, for your wonderful sharing about whether the economy recovery is V, L, or U, and also some of the key investment themes for investor to consider whether to keep cash or go into the sectors that you just have just mentioned. So, if any question you want to ask our speaker today, please uh, write in the Q and A box, or uh, not in the chat box, okay? Because there's just so many comments in the chat box, so please write in the Q and A box so we can see. your questions so if you ask in the chat box we are not going to pick question from there 
Okay, so uh, we already have many questions here on the Q and A. Now the first question is, what do you think of a likelihood of a W shape recovery? Uh, the fact J Paul says, uh, be prepared. Last few weeks he already said, be prepared. Not even W shape. Okay. You notice that all the Fed say to you that it's not U shape, it's not W shape. So actually, he implied to you that he actually indirectly do want to mention to you is L shape. So meaning to say, all this stimulus package actually you know help to to support the economy. But in the end, after that, they need to have a second stimulus package and thus continue to keep QE one, QE two, QE three. All this will continue to come in to help to cushion the the drop. Okay. Uh, I believe the Fed actually also know that it cannot be over that fast. And to to me, uh, not the W shape. Why is the L shape? Is because the later part actually the you see some of our stocks. You notice that when the March during March time, the prices some actually drop to 70, 80 percent already from their normal levels. So, implies what? Some stock prices, uh, some of them, uh, if you look through in 2008 low, some of them even lower than 2008 low. No? And if you're talking about 80 to 90% drop from the previous peak, uh, that means we're already in depressions. And definitely it's not V-shaped. W-shaped also are tightly. To me, it's actually, it's, if the market will slow down, then the whole dripping for quite some times, okay? In between, we have rebound, but actually will continue to slow down, okay? Uh, definitely, uh, just like the Fed also says, it's not W shapes. Unlikely, yeah. Mm. But back to you. Sure. Now, the next question is, will this recession become a depression? The price already factored in. Uh, the definition of depression is actually, you know, in normally, uh, people label it. If the stock price dropped by 90% from the peak, it's considered depression. Some of those Malaysian stocks already dropped by 80%. So to me, we're quite close to the depression level already. And be prepared. It will going to come down and retest that level. Okay, so yeah. The price already implied to you we are in this level. And some of them drop even lower than 2008 financial crisis. Cannot believe it, right? Uh, yes, already happened. So I think it's definitely not over yet. So the next question is, do you think that the Dow Jones will be will hit 30,000? Oh, okay. I... Right, in like how long? <laughs> uh, definitely not this year. Definitely not next year. Uh, as I said to you, it will reach 30,000, but not this, this two, three years. Okay, uh, maybe as I said to you before, I say that 1920, after 1920, the Spanish flu, the Dow Jones actually have a world economy, not only Dow Jones, have a solid nine years growth, you know, until the stock market jump all time high until the Great Depression level I mean, in 1929. That means the, the stock market jumped all time high. I think everyone's so happy. So you ask me, it may even go up higher than 30,000 to 40,000, but definitely not this year, not next year. I think will be a uh, few down the road. But because after this, the COVID-19, I think the world economy will jump. I will jump to very high level. And this way, the thousand were getting higher and higher. It will surge fast 30,000. But definitely not now. Uh, next year, I don't think so as well. Okay. So you feel that uh, we might not hit 30,000 in the next two years. So uh, yeah. the next question is, what do you think about this uh, health impact to the our ringgit strength? Uh? And then uh, how is this, uh, uh, number one is ringgit strength, number two is how is this excessive monetary easing affecting us okay as i said to you the sound the if you look through the the earlier slide here i think um the risk of a uh, rating agency is looking at us no? 
Okay, uh, we are actually A minus. So, and you notice that other countries, uh, all the Philippines, Thailand in general, you know, they talk about the public percentage debt, uh, foreign debt over GDP, all this. They're in general, in general, they actually rank higher than us. And they are talking about, we're talking about BBB plus. Uh, we are A minus. So they are one rank lower than us. So uh, given that, you know, the our debt level high, so I'm not too sure whether they will review it. I say to you, you know this that rating agency start to open their mouth right now. He says that all these emerging markets be careful. So oh. so I to me it's entirely implying that if you actually you know continue to have a you no know, borrow money and to come up with stimulus packages, you may face downgrade risk. Uh. To me, the risk is there. Then this in indirectly we're talking about the ring gates. Okay. So because our ring gate actually 30 or 40 percent actually is a foreign foreign uh foreign holders so the risk is there at the moment not happening yet okay but i say to you uh, we need to be very careful and then that's why uh and rating agencies not one uh, already highlight that you no know, they are worried about all this emerging economy and start to you know, come out with stimulus packages See, this situation exactly like 2009 eh? when all these countries start to spend money and to revive the economy then 2010 one by one being downgraded especially the European countries Greece, Portugal or you know, Ireland all this so Greece is there and this will impact Ringgit yeah next question alright so the when just now when you uh, give some idea about investing in a tech sector. Mm. Uh, would you be able to give more specifically like which uh, tech sector should we be looking at? Uh, I think in general, I think my view here is actually it's quite difficult because actually you don't know which, which stocks. Uh, but things, if uh, uh, no disruptions, no, like for example, uh, that Amazon, Alibaba definitely will do well, okay? Because they're actually not going to consume, they actually buy online, definitely the stock will go higher and higher. So they will replace conventional other business, okay? China, so the same, Alibaba definitely will be uh, getting higher. Some of you actually you know, buy from the uh, online, so definitely. Then we do have other stocks actually like doing uh, parts, uh, so, uh, my view here is actually is very hard to see. Eh? Some of them actually do face on the disruption of the supply chain. Uh, but in general, those uh, like US, cloud, all this doing well. When you look at Microsoft, all doing well. But ours, some of the tech stocks in Malaysia, some actually doing well. Suddenly, you notice that this quarter doing very well. Then suddenly, the next quarter, because of the certain disruption here, then the price will hammer down, then the analysts will downgrade it. So that's normally what happens in Malaysia tech stocks. Uh, they may get it, but suddenly, you know, disruption of the production, all this, then suddenly the result is not as good as analyst prediction uh, predicted, then the pro uh, stock price will hammer down. So you ask me in general, <laughs> it's quite tough. Of course, there has many uh, different types of uh, tax, not just you no know, on all this. Some actually doing supply to Apple, okay. Then optical inspection, all this. I'm not really uh too sure. But I'm sure that whether you know, any this disruption will affect them or not, especially on the supply chain. Yeah. Next question. Okay. So next question from Edmund. Uh, what is the what do you see the future potential of Malaysian uh, Malaysian banking sector after this crisis? Uh, as I said to you, it's tough. It's actually after six months. So now you actually say that you don't have to pay repay a loan for six months. Okay, you restructure it. Then after September October, if you are still unable to service your loan, so how? Extend another six months? Until when? Ah, that is actually the key part here. My view here, because this lockdown, after open, it may have a second lockdown. 
you notice that the vaccine only available next year. Okay, if available next year. So it will be a normal norm. Okay, so some actually may not have a cash to actually service loans. So banking sectors go have a tough time. Then how about the oil and gas counters? So all banks actually do have exposure to oil and gas sectors. As I said to you, uh, the capex from Petronas will be affected and our production, our cost of per barrel is actually higher. Okay, and last budget actually, you know, we actually project is based on the oil prices of 62, even right now, 60, 20 plus only. So, and it will stay low for some time. So, my view here is actually is uh, banking stocks. And you start to see, you know, uh, one oil trading company in, in Singapore is having problems. So, I think, uh, and Malaysia later on may have some problem with some, some oil and gas companies. So this all will affect the banking balance sheets. Uh. MBL will, will search. Then especially the crucial part is after of September, October, after six months later. That is actually the crucial part. Then the bank and have to sit down, have to sit down and think, extend another six months. Then how are you going to treat your balance sheet? Uh, uh, then if I say unable to serve it for that long one year, you the level will go higher, no? So I think challenge for banks. I think banking sector definitely have a tough time. Yes. Success to you. Okay. Like. Well, well, okay. Now uh, let's talk about healthcare. Well, just now you also talked about healthcare, right? So I, I guess there are many, also many people asking about healthcare. With healthcare stock right now, uh, for, for example, glove sector. Ah, yes. Also yes. at quite high already, okay, all-time <laughs> high, historical high. Uh. Do you suggest that we take some profit off the table and wait for the price to go down only buy or we, we should uh, invest right away? I think no harm taking profits. Uh. Okay. Uh. To me, it's actually no harm taking profits actually right now. Okay, because if let's say market going through some corrections later on, of course, if they, some investor actually don't have money or so they will sell down, the price will come down. But it, when they rebound, they will go you rebound faster and go higher than the current level also possible. So my view here is actually, if you actually want to take profits, no harm taking profits, not wrong at all. I mean, after making money already, after all, and this thing will not go away right now. It will, it will be quite some time. So when you rebound, you always will rebound even higher. So my view, my uh, suggestion will be, you know, take some profits, but Make, uh, the rest actually, you know, the main part actually keep it uh, because this whole thing actually will not end right now and will be right until next year. You notice that the, actually the like our neighboring country, uh, the numbers actually growing, like Indonesia, all this growing, the number growing uh, very high. Uh, I think we, the, <laughs> like I said to you, the Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, some, you notice that the Arab, Arab country also, the number is getting higher and the numbers, the curve is getting higher. So definitely the demand for how the glove, I think will be higher. The business will continue to do well uh, for a while, at least a few months until maybe year end until next year. They may not able to cope right now the demand. And okay. we are talking about, we are talking about one wave one, then you have a second. This is actually the summer time. We are talking about the uh, the hemisphere. For second, the like for example, the uh, New Zealand, Australia. You no, know, they are they are actually winter time right now. Okay, same as the South America, South South Africa as well. So you notice that. They're actually having winter right now. Then the number may go up. Then after that, when it come to September, October, we're talking about you no know, atmosphere, you no, know, we're gonna have a problem again. So to me, we are talking about wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four. You know. That's why it's tough. That the demand for healthcare products definitely, as long as the vaccine not available, I think the business will continue to do well. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Next yeah, question. so also also bear in mind that not all uh, countries has a lot of testing testing kit uh, available so the number are still not yet the true reflection of the yes, real yes. cases uh. I, I label I, I will consider them as black holes uh, 
actually you don't know what actually the cases. How many yeah. actually they don't actually know. They will not even know. Yeah. Okay. But what happened to people who like not yet invested in glove stock or healthcare stock, but uh, I'm thinking should we go after them right now? Should we buy at high price, uh, waiting for it to go higher, or should we wait for the? I think price wait for market cool. to come down for a while. Wait for, like, okay, so you're, uh, you're okay. Uh, yeah, if I say you know, really come down to quite attractive level, you know what? Because when the the kind of panic, you must understand right now. Uh, with our the U.S. president presidential election right now. I think the the relationship between China definitely will be the the key main things. So definitely, and you're going to talk about the number going to surge to high again the second wave. So I think he's at the Donald Trump actually definitely have a under tremendous pressure, and this will definitely you know the relationship with China definitely will not be good. So you not notice that you no know, the trade talk definitely whatever trade talk they call each other that definitely after that you will notice that the Donald Donald Trump will continue to want to improve the sec, uh, second or third one. Uh, all the tariff, all this will come back already. So, uh, and this will affect stock markets. So, wait until you know, the price down, then it will affect the global stock market, then attractive prices, then you may want to buy. Uh, wait for the corrections. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, this question comes from Kai Yi. Do you think this year we will have uh, sell in May and go away impact? I think coming soon already. Okay, my so, view. Uh, ah, my uh, view. The, the reason why you notice that actually, you know, they actually is just marginally higher than the, the 30 days, uh, 20 days moving average. Eh? Now market is actually, you know, whatever bad news, less bad news consider good news. And I just mentioned to you the sound, even the walls, the, the economy also says the dangerous gap already. So, and you notice that a lot of Guru says that uh, they're actually holding cash. Even CNBC, even if you listen to the CNBC on the fast money, you, you notice that hey, they're actually holding more cash. Even though they say buy, uh, they say buy a bit, but they're holding more cash. Hey, all these Warren Buffett also holding more cash. No? Ah, they also anticipate that. If you notice that right now, the curve actually you know, is just touching on the blue line. It's the market is just waiting for one bad news. Once actually you know, break the blue line, the 20 moving, 20 days moving average, and then you go down to to retest the 18,000 again. But of course, because of all this stimulus, uh, will depends how bad the whole things are. So if let's say the number really search like the US internal report on the CDC, that the number may search 200,000 per day, I think the lockdown will happen. And that part, the whole things will actually will go down even lower than 18,000. Because the impact will be huge. Yeah. Next All right. Yeah. So, so do you uh, th this year US will have the presidential election, and uh, do you think that the Trump will uh, use this? You no, know, will, will push up the stock market in the US before his election? Uh, because this is actually the indicators, but you notice that the numbers all bad. So okay, it's a tough time. If you look to look at the history, yeah. Uh, during the U.S. presidential election, if that year is actually in a economic recession, so why high chances that she uh, will lose? Uh? <laughs> okay, so you, you, you uh, your so forecast is Trump will not uh, win the second term, uh? I think he has, he has a tough time. As I said to you, just now I share with you that 1976, okay, on the president uh, Ford, actually he lost the elections, uh, okay. That's why he has only one term. So. So you ask me, I think it's a tough time, it's a really tough time actually. Uh, and you, when you talk about later part, when ask, if I say, no, the Trump says, no, we finally get the vaccine. That 1976 strength food experience will, you will see main media start to talk about that. And the American will not get uh, no, vaccinated with that, you know, the vaccines. So I think, you, American right now actually quite cautious, no? So to me, I think this definitely eh, will affect him. He thought maybe a plus point to him, but I think uh, not everyone really trusts. Okay. And if I say economy bad, I think it's quite tough for him. It's quite hard to push up the market, eh, given that the fundamental like, the companies that we have affected. Not all, but quite a number actually having problems. Of course, those tech stocks will do, going to do well. 
but others actually you know having tough time. So with a lot of uh, QE or money printing going on in major developed uh, countries and economies, uh, there are a few more questions on your perspective on gold and precious metal. Can you share with us? If you look through the history, okay, each time of the QE, you notice that the gold prices are getting higher. Actually, uh, gold prices last time actually getting higher, uh, surged to beyond 2009 when you have QE1, QE2, QE3. People lost confidence in actually US dollars. What happened again? I think uh, it, it may happen. It, it may go beyond 1009. Okay, because this definitely, the Fed already says, definitely not one QE, but the second QE and more QE. So to me, uh, the gold prices may go higher. Okay, and the debt level is getting higher and higher. So the trust in US dollars. Less and you're printing more money, so people you know don't want the US dollar depreciate. Ultimately, some actually may move to gold, okay, to preserve values. Okay, but next. What do you think about uh, 5G? This industry, uh, what 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 stock? If you think 5G will go, uh, what stock should we uh, pay attention to? Uh, I think in general, in general. I will not go into the stocks. Huh? I think I will say that in general, the technology sectors will do well. Okay, it's just that some actually know the valuation is quite high. Uh, my view here is actually you know whether they can sustain the kind of valuations or not, and other issues. Uh, you ask me, I will not rush in right now. Okay, of course, you actually some already priced in huh? all these five G things. So to me. Uh, some actually doing well, so but to me it's actually the valuation is quite high. You know, whether you know, can command that kind of valuation. Okay, so to me, five uh, G definitely will be the in thing. Okay, but uh, key part here right, right now is actually is given this sort of tough economic situations. Uh, okay, a lot of business actually you not know, affected. Uh, okay, uh, a lot of capex will be lower. So things. The money actually putting in uh, on the technology uh, development, all this, I think, will, may not be very high. Not normal. Not many company want to expand their business during this period of time. Okay, the technology definitely will be good, but not many people no want to uh, expand their business during this period of time. Yeah. Next question. All right. So, what do you think investing in bonds or bonds fund? Uh? Uh, short term bond, yes, okay. Uh, long term bond, I think, is tough, okay. Because when actually, you know, with all this QE, you start to in increase money supply. Of course, the oil prices will continue to be low, yeah, but we don't know when actually the inflation will spike up, okay. Uh, that does not mention that oil prices will continue to be low, okay, but we are talking about the OPEC, actually, you know, start to cut. Uh, productions, but of course you do have a small, smaller country. Uh, uh, may not want to may not want to follow the OPEC. Okay, so my view here is actually is, uh, we don't know when you actually will the price will jump. Okay, because they actually keep on you no, know, they are actually cutting uh, this month onwards. So it may jump. You no, know? so we are talking about the oil prices may jump later on. Uh, then inflation will come in, then will affect bond bond prices, especially long term bond. So given that the printing money with higher inflation, then uh, long term bond may underperform later on with the higher high inflation rates uh, and higher yield. Next question. Okay, let's let's do one last question because we have three exit time already. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like this question from David. Uh, so do you think the KLCI index will retest the much low or maybe broke you know, the much low? Uh, if you look through the report uh, by uh, KLCI, okay, recent low is actually 1,080. 1, uh, okay. So my view here is actually is, uh, some research report saying that 1,000, 1,000 levels. My view here is actually with the curb of short selling, I think not uh, many traders able to sort uh, short the markets. 
the index may not drop to very low level, but the key part here is actually is, I think it will come down. It tried to test to below uh, 1,003 one more time. It's, every day you notice that afterwards, afternoon it was selling to start to come in already. So it will try to test 1,002. Um, you ask me whether it will test 1,001, I mean 1,000 levels. Some research report showing 1,001. 1,000 level. I think will roughly, it may drop below 1,002. Okay. If I say, you know, the second waves of selling, we're talking selling, selling may go away. It may happen. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, likely happen, uh, that broke 1,002. So, if you have a lot I mean, you look at a technical cash. chart, you also mentioned to you, it's actually, it's, it can happen. Yeah. Looks like it, the, the the gap the, the gap have not been able to close above here. Now we are minimal. And the closing. Huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One, the, fundament like that. Huh, the fundamentals actually you know it's quite weak. See, look at China as well. If you look at uh Wu Huang Jing Zhou, the first of May, that kind of holiday, actually the year to year changes year to year sales are actually dropped by fifty percent. No? Of course you compare to previous month the number jump, but you compare to year to year it's actually dropped by fifty percent, no? So uh, don't get too excited about <laughs> China because of China will you know, boom that you know, help the world economy. Of course, they actually now sub production, but they're also having tough time. No, uh, talk about supply chain, okay, and I think it's tough, really tough. tough. So, we're talking about, and if that company is actually doing worldwide business, you no, know, like commodity CPO, we're actually doing uh, the demand from all, all this country, you no. Know, uh, does not mention to you India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, you are talking about uh, uh, Africa countries. So all this, the demand will be lower. That's the reason why the recently touched on 1009. You ask me, CPO, it may go below 1009. Will go below the recent last year low of 1009. It may go below that. Okay? Maybe, I'm not too sure how low it, it will drop. It will low. That's the reason why plant, uh, while the spanning stock of plantation shares went up, uh, you notice that the CPO price actually come, came down. No? So, uh, I think it's only the retailer get excited. Only. <laughs> so, I think be careful. Yeah, yeah. so you, you were saying that uh, the worst may... for the palm oil have not come yet. Uh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the, the, the disruption, uh, because uh, you are talking about the global demand. Uh, so, not Malaysia okay, that means okay. We are talking about global, so to me, it's actually it's tough already. If that, that sector is actually, you know, they are doing business worldwide, uh, then the global, the disruption, because if we're going to have one wave, the second wave, the this third wave, it's tough until next year. Mm, all right, so maybe you should, uh, you know, keep some cash now, as you suggested, and uh, look into a consumer staple, uh, uh, like maybe Nestle, F and N, uh, or maybe uh, go uh, to yeah, yeah, the healthcare buying. sector. <laughs> ah, yeah, they'll do well. Uh, or tech sector. Uh, uh, do uh, the price uh, actually cheap, then you buy. Uh, but so other things, <laughs> the rest will be quite, you need to be very careful. Yeah, quite, quite tough. Lah, so that's uh, the idea. All right, so uh, let, let me just uh, share my screen right now to tell you when is our uh, next webinar. Okay, so our next webinar, the topic is Unleash the Tactics of Dissecting Technical Charts. So in this webinar, you'll be able to ask our speaker to, to dissect any charts for you and he will share with you the short-term uh, trading plan and how you can trade uh, this kind of market. Okay, you can ask him any charts. So it happened on 19 May, uh, it's a Tuesday, 8.30 to 9.45, it's a couple of days before Raya period. So, so tune in on the 19 May, you can register in the link. Okay, I've just given you in the webinar uh, chat box and also as well as I leave it comment on the Facebook Live. If you are catching it from Facebook, then you can find the link to register for our next webinar where we'll be able to ask our speaker directly to dissect any technical charts for you to tell you where are the possible entry and possible exit. So then uh, this uh, webinar is brought to you by Kenanga. So of course you have to talk about the, the benefit of trading with a Kenanga account. So you want to, you want to, uh, if you haven't had an account, now I understand that over, over the last MCU period, there are so many account opening requests, especially with Kenanga. So uh, if you haven't signed up an account with Kenanga, please go to the link that I shared in the 
web box, uh, with the webinar chat box, and also in the Facebook Live comment section to sign an account with Kenanga. Of course, due to overwhelming response, so uh, we will do our best to uh, to cater to you. Okay. So uh, if you have it open, please find uh, Kenanga to open an account. Of, of course, if you already have an account and you're thinking they have one more, uh, of course, you can also talk to our friendly broker from Kenanga. Okay, they'll be able to help you uh, to, to open a, a stock trading account. In fact, I, I myself is also a Kenanga client. Now, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ui, for sharing your idea with us today about your perspective on economy recovery, whether UL or V-shape, and uh, not possible not possibly w shape uh. <laughs> and also some of the key ideas uh, where we can uh, invest our money yeah. right and uh, I, I believe that many of us today have uh, benefited a lot and see that many people are saying that this is very helpful thank you so much so yeah thanks everybody most importantly thank all of you for tuning in on a Friday evening to join uh, this uh, webinar brought to you by Kananga right so I hope to see you all in our next webinar by Kananga all right. Thank this you very Shen much. Chu, uh, signing off. Bye bye. Thanks.